Today is July 31st, 2013. Uh, my name is Margaret Alfonso, and I'm interviewing Agustin Eliseo Cordova. This interview is being recorded for the Boulder County Latino History Project and the Maria Rogers Oral History Program. The interview is being filmed by Jason Romero, Jr. Welcome, Thank Augustine. You. Thank you. Thank you for coming to share this important story about Boulder County and our Latinos in Boulder County. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, tell me, what is your full name? Eliseo Agustin Cordova. I go by Agustin Cordova. And where do you presently live? I live in Lafayette. Um, can you tell me when and where you were born? I was born in Seco, New Mexico, right by Taos. And uh, I was raised in uh, San Luis Valley, but I was born in Seco. Okay, and, and you grew up there until how, what age? I, I grew up in San Luis Valley until I got to high school. And then, uh, you know, the, the winds of war, you know, Vietnam and all that stuff. So I got, I got swept into that. And I got out in uh, 1968. You know, during that turmoil, you know, Martin Luther King and, and uh, Robert Kennedy. Um, the Democratic Convention in Chicago that year. Uh, Kent State, I mean, you know. So, so anyway, yeah, so I got out in, in 1968. Uh, I went to California for a while before I came to so I was in LA uh, for a while. Uh, I was not the before I was at the uh, LA Motor in 1970. I was there for that. And I had actually, when I got out in 1968, I actually uh, went to Adam State. I went to Adam State for, for a little bit. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and the Chicano movement was just getting started back then. You know, The, Chicago, the, the Coors boycott was the big thing that was going on and that had reached the San Luis Valley already. And so uh, when I took off to LA, I had. Uh, posted up all over my car, you know, but Chicano, boycott coolers, you know. And so we'd be, we'd be driving, uh, like, in New Mexico, Espanola, places like that. These guys would want to pull us over because, you know, they were, well, some, some were curious and, and some were offended, you know, that were trying to tell them to do something, you know. But a lot of, a lot of it was curiosity, and we would tell them, you know, uh, coolers, uh, you know, they don't, they, they don't have, a, well, they didn't have a union back then, they didn't have very many minorities working there. So we, we were boycotting them. And, and it was a boycott that lasted a, a lot of years, but was effective. You know, once he heard his pocketbook, he changed his tune. You know, and and Coors, I mean, that was the that was the beverage of, of the Chicano back then. You know, I mean, who, who, in Los Angeles, I mean, who was spreading the word in Los Angeles? I mean, here I am in LA with no car and, and red posters all over my car. What car Coors is coming? And so it, 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 it caught a lot of attention, but but uh, but it worked. It worked. All right. Um, I know this seems out of out of order here, but where were your parents born? Were they from the valley or? New Mexico. From New Mexico. Yeah, New Mexico, yeah. As a matter of fact, I've been doing some genealogy and, uh, yeah, well, New Mexico. Cordova okay. and my, my mom was in Hawaii. So they were born and raised there in New Mexico. My grandmother was Apache. Mm -hmm. From New Mexico. From New Mexico. Um, if you were to describe your ethnicity, then what words would you describe yourself as? C H I C N O G I O. You know, Mexican uh, American. You know, we had to have we had to come up with we have a unique identity. You know, and there wasn't a word that really fit it. So that that was our term. That was how we identified ourselves. It's Chicano. Yo soy Chicano. You know, and, uh, the song. It's a declaration of the Yo soy Chicano. Yeah. C H I C A N O. Can you tell us some of the lyrics of that Yo Soy Chicano? Yo Soy Chicano, Puro Chicano. Si no les gusta, pues a ver qué van a hacer. Tengo una historia llena de gloria. Llevo en las venas la sangre de mi querer. It's one verse. And the chorus is Soy Nuevo Mexicano, también soy de Texas. Soy de Arizona, California, en Copa. Soy campesino. También vivo en las ciudades, por todas partes, vivo y canto mi canción. One, uh, one verse in, in the chorus, you know. But it, like I said, it was, it was a declaration of a whole word. And, and uh, we sang that song in a lot of places with a lot of boost on it. Can you tell me some other, um, can you just tell me other words that would describe the word Chicano? 
just go a little deeper about the description of Chicano, the meaning of Chicano? I'm not really sure I'm following what, what you mean. In the song or just Just in general, just in general. Well, like I said, we weren't really accepted uh, by Mexicans, we weren't accepted by Americans, you know, so we were right, right, right in between there, you know, so that's really the, the, the meaning that, that we had for it, you know. Mm -hmm. That was our term, and, and I, apparently that, that that's a word that had a negative connotation in Mexico or something like that. I mean, we didn't take it because we heard it in Mexico, that was just, uh, that's what we identified with, mm -hmm. Chicano. And, and that encompassed a lot of people, a lot of, you know, Different, you know, because the the Chicanos are different ethnicities in there too, you know. So that we encompass everybody, you know, you know, first, second, third generation people that were from Mexico, were were identified with that also. You know, so, so it was just a, a term that, that, uh, that kind of fit. Okay. Thank you. Um, can you tell me what kind of work you've done in the past and what your work is presently? I was a software engineer. Started with IBM and. and and then became a contractor after that. So right now I'm retired and I'm also a musician. So I mean, I've always played music, you know, professionally, semi-professionally, you know, through, throughout my life. So but right now I'm retired. Okay. Um, tell me, uh, when and why did you come to Boulder County? I was in Los Angeles and I came home to visit my parents in the San Luis Valley and my brother wasn't there anymore. And he told me, well, he's up in Boulder at college and I was like, what? college. So I came up to visit him. And this would have been this would have been the summer of nineteen seventy. And well not only did I find my brother, I found a whole community here. Man. You know, my brother and his kids. And there were all these people from back home that, that had been recruited to come to, to, to school up here. There was a program called the Migrant Action Program and there was Mumbox. And so and so I, I came up, I, like I said, I was on vacation. I came up here to visit, and I rented this beautiful little town called Boulder. I had never been here before. It's just a beautiful little place. And then to find this community here in college, I don't know, that's how I ended up here. So I came to visit my brother, and I went back to Los Angeles, quit my job, and came back. What year was that? 1970. 1970. So you, when did you exactly attend? University of Colorado. Here started, in started in uh, 1971. Uh, January, uh, yeah, January 71, and I got a degree in 1977. And your major? My major was uh, mental health uh, sociology. Uh, I wanted to work with with, with you, and I ended up being, uh, you know, I, mean, I ended up working with IBM, being a programmer out there. You know, it's just, I mean, I'd always been fascinated by computers anyway, so mm -hmm. as soon as I saw that opportunity, I, I jumped on it. So you took a shoal shift in, in your yeah, career? Yeah, well, I had a family then, you know, so I had a, uh, I really believe about my family. I had to support my family, so being, uh, doing social work, you know, it's, it didn't pay too many bills, but, but I wasn't concerned about that. But once, once I started working there, uh, I just saw a good opportunity to, to better support my family. Okay. Um, can you tell me what life was like on campus during that time? Well, it was... It was beautiful because we had community. Okay, there were so many of us there, and then and then we had to fight for everything that we, that, 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 that we got. So it was kind of like a double-edged sword. But but the, the, the community part was beautiful because it wasn't. Everybody was so involved and, and it was so so together, so much unity that you didn't mind doing these things. You, know, you didn't mind getting up on Saturday and, and, and going to a, a rally or, or or a march. Or, or you know, a, a boycott Safeway or, or one of the liquor stores, what, whatever we were doing, you know, because it was community. Do you see your compadres over there and your friends, and, and someone bring food, and, and and I was always there, you know, doing doing the music, you know. So it was uh, Boulder was an absolutely awesome experience, and then and then you have the academic part of it, you know. Here you are, you know, like history, geography, science, you know. I mean. For me, it, it just doesn't get any better than that. It was, it was awesome. Great. It was really awesome. What, uh, what were some of the uh, issues that you guys were? We were supporting uh, yes. the uh, lettuce boycott. We were behind uh, Cesar Chavez pretty much, okay? And, and he, was, uh, he was supporting the farm workers. So we were boycotting, uh, we were boy I told you about the quid, but we got the floor. And uh, boycotting lettuce, grapes, uh, Safeway carriage grapes, so we would boycott Safeway. Um, a lot of liquor stores here carried uh, Gala wines, you know, which, you 
know, they make the wines out of it. So we were boycotting the, the liquor stores, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, so yeah, a lot of a lot of boycotts. You know, and just trying to try to get more support for 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 our our friends. You know, in, in our farm worker friends. You know, and and, and, and and to spread the word you know, about education and this and that. Were there issues on campus specifically that were aside from the community? Financial aid. Financial Can you tell aid. us about that? Financial aid. Well, back then uh, I think I think we were like 12 percent of the population in Colorado. And so, you know, our, our thing was, you know, uh, the word we used to use was parity. You know, we would like to get uh, about 12% of the financial aid that's available. We were 12% of the, of the tax base, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty much, you know, what we were asking for. And uh, there was opposition, of course, you know. I don't know. I don't really. The, the opposition was always there. So we had to fight for, for financial aid, we had to fight for our office space. We had to fight. We had to fight for everything. You know, there were some things we didn't have, but the mm -hmm. majority of it was uh, having to deal with the administration and, and, and them being just not being very cooperative in you know, so. It took a lot of meetings, uh, took over a couple of buildings a couple of times, you know, to get our point across. Can you talk about that? Can you talk about the TV one? Yeah, TV one. TV one, and there was another time that uh, uh, took over regions for, for a while too. But TV one was a big one, and uh, we had been in that building for, for quite a while. Uh, TV one means temporary building number one, so that's that's a place for you know when they're trying to find something for you, that's where they put you. Well, we've been there for quite a while, so we're trying to get better. We're trying to get better offices for for our programs, and and um, and so uh, you know we, we were wanting that and, and financial aid, and, and so we just took over the building. They, they wouldn't, they, they got to the point where they didn't want to, want to talk to us, so we probably just took over the building and said, you know, we, we, need, we need your attention. Mm -hmm. What was the outcome of that? Well, the outcome of that was eventually we, 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 we ended up getting some, some office space uh, over at UMC. So yeah, there was, there was some movement uh, from it, but, but it, it took some drastic steps, steps to get to it. Mm -hmm. And what organization were you, had developed at that point, what were you all called? We were just, well, like I said, there were two programs up there for, for respondents. That one was a migrant action program, and the other one was UMAS, and there was a, a Black Alliance was there, the, the Native Peoples were there, uh, uh, MIA. Uh, and and so, so we had different groups and we supported each other. Okay? But we, we were like, we were UMAS and, and, and MAP and the Black Student Alliance. And, mm -hmm. yeah, so. Did you all have to share office space? Or? Yeah. Yeah. But eventually, we, you know, we got, our, we got some options. Okay. Okay. You know, it's um, about respect, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you felt like you got respect after those demonstrations and everything? Yeah. It, it worked. Mm -hmm. we, we, there's some good things came out of it. Okay. You know, a lot of educators came out of that, those programs because education is so important. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of my friends you know, ended up getting PhDs in education. People that I grew up with, you know, they never, they never dreamed it. He'd be a PhD, you know, wow, you know, it's, it's awesome. So yeah, the, the program, had, it had some, some, some repercussions. It, it was worth all the, all the, all the fighting. It was worth it. it was. Well, you really talked about what life was like on campus. Uh, what would you say, in general, was the overall education like here at CU? Well, the education was good. You know, I never, uh, I never sensed any 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 problem with the professors up there. So, as far as in the classes, I mean, I don't recall getting, having any, any any racial problems. With the professors were pretty open-minded. So, if you, if you took a class, you had to pass it. <laughs> you know, you had to pass it. So you know, so that that there wasn't anything negative as far as mm -hmm. that goes. I, mean, I had experience, you know, bad teaching back in where I came from in San Luis Valley. A lot of races down there, but you, you didn't find that. See, most of the professors were very they were professional. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can you you've already talked a little bit about your organizations and your involvement. Um, can you talk any more about the student organizations? Um, did you have LULAC? Was Metch on campus? Was that a part of? Uh, Metch came later. You know, uh, uh, Metch ended up uh, in Denver. 
But no, yeah, we were working with anybody that did want. Yeah, we worked with LULAC. Yeah. Any organization mm -hmm. that was that was political or progressive, we 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 supported them. We had resources at the at, at the university that that we took advantage. One of the things we did was we had uh, uh, teatro, you know, street theater, and we got we used that. That was a very good tool to get uh, our message across. You know, we would go everywhere. Uh, we took that teatro to Omaha, Nebraska, one time. And to you know, the community, we used to go to Fort Lupton, we were going to Fort Lupton and, and to other places. But we would educate the people with, with the skits because the skits are funny, you know, and, and, and it gets their attention and you get your point across. So uh, so we were able to, to, to do the teatro, uh, not only here in the community, we, we took it, we even took it out of the state. Mm -hmm. And one of the main functions, uh, you know, I was a, a member of the teatro, I would, I would do some of the skits. But my, my main focus was I would I would get up there with my guitar and sing at the beginning to kind of warm up the you know the group you know and everybody was hustling back there. you could hear them they're getting ready you know they're putting on their props and they're getting ready to the tap and I was up there you know warming up the, up the crowd and they could always tell they always knew by the reception that I I would got from the music what kind of a crowd it was going to be you know what I mean so I mean when I, when the crowd was really really hot and responsive you know they they would put on a show that was unbelievable. So yeah, we had a lot of fun, a and we got the point across. Teatro was a, a beautiful instrument to do that with. So tell me about some of the story. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the stories that you remember? Well, I remember one. Uh, uh, the very first one that we used to start off with, <coughs> excuse me, was called uh, uh, it was about the I don't know what we called it, but it, it's it's you know when, uh, about the nurse, and 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 so here's here's a nurse. He's on the telephone. She's talking to somebody, and and and, and in comes uh, <laughs> Frank with his wife, and she's. <laughs> and they, they need they need medical attention, and, and the ladies are like, no, 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 you know, just it was just a parody on, on some of the things that we had to deal with that, that these people were really insensitive to, you know. So yeah, that, that was one, and then we did some about other about education and stuff like that. But we had a lot of a lot of lot, lot of skits, you know, and, and 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 we were writing most of them. There was there was a a, a, a couple of guys from uh, California, Valdez. Uh, and he was a pretty good writer, so we would take a lot of stuff that he wrote too, and, and use it in our skits. I'm sure you heard Bruce Valdez and, mm -hmm. and Danny Valdez, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. yeah they, they're, they're the ones that did the lumba, the lumba, the movie, the lumba. Mm -hmm. And so we would we used some of his skits, and we wrote a lot of our own. And zoot suit, yeah, but didn't want yeah, him to do zoot suit. Too. That's, that's correct. Yeah. So, so the lessons that you were kind of teaching, like you mentioned that one about the hospital and the wife. What were some of the other things that you were trying to? To project to educate people on education, how important education was. Yeah, you know, uh, that that was really the, the thrust of uh, the majority of what we were saying was education. We need to get you here to get educated, your kids, your cousins, and we were recruiting people. Mm. We were recruiting back then. We, we were recruiting a lot of people. You know. So, yeah, education. Yeah, that was that was uh, the main thrust was education, and it still is. It's the most important thing that. You gotta know who you are, uh, where you're going, and how you're gonna get there. You know, education yeah. provides that for you. So, how do you see what's kind of where we are today? To see you with education, in terms of uh, well, I mean, looking I, at we your made people. Some progress, but all, all of a sudden it just seemed like it, you know. So yeah, it's time to it's time to go beat the bushes again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important. Yeah, yeah. For a while there, it was, I mean, and, and it was great. But then all of a sudden, you know. It, it, Everyone kind of swung back, and, and it's time to time to get, get that momentum going the other way. It, it really is. There's just too many people just dropping out, and uh, yeah. well, the way education is going in this country, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's serious. Well, now, why do you think that is? Why do you think it's gone the other way? Well, because I mean, there's going to be less funding. You know, it's going to be it's going to be an elite thing. It was when we got here. Education was elite. Higher education was for elite. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we changed that for a while, and, and it's swinging back to being that way. Only elite people are going to be able to afford it. Everybody else, what, you're going to, you're going to get it on the internet? I mean, you can learn a lot, you know, but some people can, can, can do that, but not, not everybody's adept at that, you know. Some people, <laughs> you need that classroom, they need the tutors, mm -hmm. and so that's what, that, that's what needs to be done. And that's why I'm saying I, I kind of see, you know, kind of payment kind of swinging back until we, we can't afford it. A lot of good, a lot of good things came out of those programs. So, 
Um, I just have a quick question. Yes. Um, going off of that, what advice would you have for current students and who are here at the university right now who are trying to create that kind of a pipeline back into the educational system? Get united. Talk. You need to talk. You, you guys have Facebook now. You, you can you can you can network on, uh, on Facebook and, and, and spread the word that way. And say, hey, look, you know, let's uh, let's get together. Let's, let's talk about uh, how can we uh, how can we uh, find a way to talk to the uh, to, uh, university, or how can we find ways to get financial aid? Where are resources? You know, get together and talk about those things. What resource what, what resource do we need? Uh, how can we get them? But the thing is, to, is to get people together, get them united. And, and, and once you get that train moving, man, the the, the, the momentum will, will, will carry you, you know, and, and you'll you'll love it. So yeah, just just get get together, communicate, and find a goal, and go for it. And you're going to disagree. You're going to disagree, but keep your your goal in mind. You know, you're going to have arguments, but hey, this is where we're going. Okay, I know you don't disagree with me, but this is where we're going. We have to go there. And people, people react, you know, they, they do. Even they, they disagree with you. They, they, they want to go the same place you do. They want to educate their kids and their grandkids. They want a better life for, for us, you know. We respect. You know, we, we, we've been here for, for a long time. We're, we've made contributions, you know, uh, to this country from, from the very just before this country was this country. So just go for it. Talk. Good night. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Um, would you feel comfortable talking about Los Cese Boulder now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were, like I said, uh, I, I knew uh, all of them pretty well, you know, and uh, they, weren't, uh, uh, they weren't radical militants, you know, I don't think they wanted to kill anybody. What led up to Los Cese? What was happening at that point in time? You no, know, actually, the, the very first bombing that happened during the TV1 occupation. It was kind of intense at that time. You know, that, that was that was intense. You know, we we took over a building. Okay, we just we barricaded ourselves in there. And we said, look, we're not going to leave this place until you talk to us. And, and you know, anytime you talk to authority that way, their their response is, you know, they're not going to talk to you. They're they're going to push back. You know, you know, you push, they push you back. You know, so it, it was very very hot and very intense. And we wanted, you know, we wanted financial aid. We wanted better better offices, better office space. We wanted a little bit of respect. And, and it just took a while to, to get to it. But in those days, they were, uh, like I said, uh, they were not, uh, out, I don't think they were out uh, to hurt anybody. Uh, they were just uh, activists. Uh, I, I think uh, I think Neva may have even been uh, president of the student council up there at CU. So yeah, just, it, they were just people that just activists <coughs> mm -hmm. trying to make a difference. Does anybody really know what happened? How? No, there there was a grand jury inquiry, you know, and, uh, that that took a while, and they just said that uh, it was their their neglect, <coughs> excuse me, that led to the uh, explosions. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it, uh, kind of ironically, you know, the the song pretty much summed that up, and I, and I did that in two days. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I already knew what conclusion they were going to give us, even though it took them three or four years to to do that. You know, I mean, uh, the song says, you know. The, uh, the law said that they would kill themselves because of their own uh, carelessness. Can you paraphrase the song a little bit? Can you recite it like a poem? What verse? The song is, is, is kind of like a comedy style, you know. <clears throat> Well, the, the chorus says, en este cielo de sierra, in this heavenly place that we live in, Colorado, in Colorado, you can see the souls of, of six soldiers, six martyrs, you know, when you look up in, into the sky. That's kind of how the chorus goes. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's the gist, <coughs> excuse me, the gist of the, of the chorus, you know, it's kind of hard to, I never tried to kind of do a translation mm -hmm. on that song. But yeah, so that's just kind of, they were soldiers. They, they were people that were fighting for a good cause, and they're no longer with us. Mm -hmm. So, los seis, seis, fus, seis fusilados, you know, six martyrs. 
Can you say it in Spanish you, before you get to sing it for us later on? Will you kind of say the words in Spanish even though they're not translated? Sure. Say the lyrics. Do you want me to do that now? Can you? Okay, voy a cantar un corrido en Colorado pasó. Murieron los seis de Boulder, dos noches en mayo de 74. Era una noche ocupada, which means well, we had occupied TV1. So that part there it says, era una noche ocupada, we were TV1. Era, era una noche ocupada. Cuando de pronto llegó, and all of a sudden, it came, this blast, ese sonido yeloso, como a las ocho, <coughs> excuse me, tres vidas llegó. In other words, that first morning took three lives. Amaneció la mañana, when the morning came, ahí en la sierra yo vi el alma de Neva Romero, you can see her smiling face up there in our arms, subiendo hasta el cielo, going to heaven, sonriendo hasta el fin, smiling to the very end. And the chorus, and then, cuando se acabó la bulla, after, after that noise had passed, dos noches después sucedió, murieron tres más soldados, three more soldiers, Tres más fusilados, three more martyrs, ganados, caído. He was in the second car. Uh, la ley les dijo a la gente, una mentira les dio, que murieron por su descuido. And was allowed to say that because of their own carelessness, la bomba explotó. So, Thank you. Yes, you Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah, and kind of give you a little bit of yeah. a little bit of insight as to that. some of the words. You know, somebody said, "Ocupado." What do you mean? Well, that's why it was TV One. It was we were occupying TV One. Okay, una noche ocupada. So that's what that means. Okay, thank you. And uh, you know, a little tidbit on that. On that, you know, I uh, like I, I was telling you a while ago, Boulder was a really small place, and, and that that very first bombing, we were me and some friends were just just kind of hanging out at the porch, just I don't know, just, just hanging out when we heard that blast. You know, and. We didn't know what was going on, and, and, and uh, the next day I, I went up to TV1 behind, uh, there's Boulder Creek and there was a little trail over to TV1, and the people were crying back there, you know, oh, what's going on? Well, they had found Neva's driver's uh, license, so they knew she was one of the, one of the victims in that in the class. So back then, uh, I always had my books and my guitar, okay? So I, and as soon as I heard that, I kind of just kind of went, some bushes and started writing the song. Yeah. And I had to make an, an adjustment a couple of days later and I had to do a second moment. But uh, yeah, that was the beginning of the end. That scared a lot of us, you know, a lot of people. Uh, what happened after that? How did it? It just disintegrated. People got scared. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like, hey, you know, we didn't come here, I mean, we came here to get educated. We didn't, we didn't declare war. You know, we just, <laughs> I want to get a good education. <laughs> I want to educate me and my, my friends and my, my kids, my cousins. So that, that was the beginning of the end. I mean, after that, people just, just kind of quietly just. So did some movement pick up after that? That well, because yeah, there were some mechas, you know, you know, other 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 places picked up on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it kind of continued. But that was the beginning of the end here, uh, of, of the movement here in Boulder, uh, which was to me was like the grand day. They were doing a lot of things around uh, boycotting cores, grapes, and uh, farm workers. Yeah. How did you guys, did you guys stay together though as a group? Uh, no. You know, was people, there contact between, the, or did it splinter off completely? Well, you know, it just kind of, it, it just started slowing down a lot and, and people started getting their, their degrees and just kind of, kind of, you know, moving on. Mm -hmm. But, but as far as the, the, the thrust will go on here in Boulder, it just kind of, it just really slowed down. It was, it was the beginning of the end. But you know, those things, it doesn't happen in a day or two. You know, you look back and, and you can see, you can see how it just kind of, you know, but back then you didn't see it, you didn't see it was happening, but it was happening. 
Where did all the people that you knew closely go? Where, what did they end up doing? You know, it, do you know it, uh, about them? Well, you know, it's, uh, well, like, you know, uh, Joe Garcia, the lieutenant governor, did know most of you. Oh. Yeah. So, educators? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's doctors, PhDs, doctors, lawyers, I mean, a lot of, a lot of people, accountants, mm -hmm. you know, a, a lot of, a lot of professionals came out of those, out of those programs. You know, like I said, people that, you know, that we grew up together in the little, in the little town that I'm from, you know, we, we never had aspirations of being called as graduates, you know, but, but we made it, we did it. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're an accountant, or they're, 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 they're doctors, you know, they're, they're principals, they're superintendents, you know. It's it's it was beautiful. A lot of a lot of good people came out of that those programs. I'm proud to say. <laughs> so a question that I had was, how did this affect your life personally? And you've really answered so much of that already. But is there anything else that you'd want to say about that? Well, it enriched me. person and it made me realize the atomic power that we have in numbers. But you gotta get people together. Mm -hmm. We we made we made some changes. I mean Joe Coors man, he would look down his nose at us and oh, tell me what to do. Well guess what? He changed his ways because you know you heard him in the pocket, that's the only language you understand. What were some of those issues? The union, of course, you know, the hiring practices, they didn't have very many minorities. And, and, and we were the main, we were the main client. That's, that was the irony of the whole thing. We, we were the one that, we were the ones that made him a billionaire. We, we were the ones that made him, so we supposed to be stopped. He had to, you know, he had to listen. But it, but it took a, boy, uh, a boycott, and it took a long time. And it wasn't just here in Colorado. I'm going to tell you, I, in California, New Mexico, where all the rest of it, they were all course drinkers. But once that changed, he changed his ways, you know. And now he's back to the way he was. But but, but the point is, is there, there's power there, and, and you need to know how to tap into it and, and, and use it. You know, there's, there's atomic power in, in numbers. There, mm -hmm. there is. And, and the young people need to know that. And that's, that's what I got out of it, okay? Mm -hmm. Besides the education that I got, I realized, you know, that, that you can you can get things done. Things can be done. Si se puede. So let me ask you this. I'm going to jump around a little bit. Um, just thinking uh, now about the uh, the 2008 and the 2012 presidential election. Can you? Do you think this is going to make a difference for Latinos in politics? Well, if, if Latinos look at it as, uh, as uh, hey, if they can go, we can go, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they, they put a black man in, in office there, and, and so yes, yeah, that, that's a positive thing, that we can see that and, 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 and aspire to do that and try to put one of ours in, in that office also. So I, I see that as, as a positive thing. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. Have you ever experienced discrimination directly or been treated differently because of your ethnicity here, especially in Boulder County? And, and can you tell me something about that? Well, you know, uh, most of that was really, most of, most of that racism was back when we were here in the 70s, okay? It, it doesn't seem like it's as bad anymore, but back then it was, it was, pretty, it was pretty obvious. And, and by the way, we were treated up on that, on that campus, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, you know, as far as the, the, the community works, I mean, uh, you're going to have, you know, discrimination, even, it's, it's just more subtle, okay? It used to be a lot more up front, but it's just a lot more subtle right now. They're a little bit more careful with it. And that was because of what the, the work that we did, we, you know, those EOP programs, you know, they had to be sensitive about it, okay? Mm -hmm. So, so during that period of time, it, it, it kind of cooled off a little bit, and I was kind of starting to, to rear its head again. So it's time to go back out there and beat the bushes again. and. Mm -hmm. and Remind them of who we are and what kind of power we got, and and, and that we're not going to go away. Mm -hmm. You know, 
So I have a tendency to kind of get off on tangents. With that. No, <laughs> you're not on a tangent at all. This is all really important about campus life then and what you see evolving now. So this isn't a tangent. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the racism, yeah, it wasn't, like I said, uh, you know, up on campus, but it, it kind of changed after that. The majority yeah. of the racism I experienced in, in the San Luis Valley, most people down there were super mm -hmm. Okay. I don't want to go there, man. Okay. So, have, are you inspired in any way to, with all that you've shared here, to be involved in politics? Like where? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean that, that never changes. You know, you always mm -hmm. want to, you always want to see your, 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 your gente do better. You know, you always do. I don't, it doesn't matter, you know, what your own personal accomplishments are. You know, you still have your, your, your cousins and, and, and the rest of your people that, that if you can help them, help them. Mm -hmm. You know. The, the, the thing is, is you know, we, we make progress and it, and it takes it back, and, and, and so we just got to keep grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding. That's the nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. But the thing is to keep doing it, mm -hmm. you know, and whatever I can do to help, I do, and believe me, any time, any, any opportunity I get when I'm talking to a young person, any opportunity I get to, to, to try to teach them that they have atomic power, I, mean, I, I, I do it. And, and I tell them, I know this from experience. I'm not. I'm just not talking. Boycotts and those things—they work. Okay. So, the other question is, um, you've already expressed how it's—it's it's time to become active again, because of some of the things that you've seen. But, in general, do you think that there have? I mean, what? Like what? people have told you what changes have there been here in Boulder County for Latinos that are positive? Politically, you mean? Uh, yeah, I mean I don't, I don't really politically or lifestyle or you know, anything that you might identify? You know, I, I don't see you know, much of a you know, Hispanic population here in Boulder. For some reason, I don't know, maybe it's because it's expensive for labor. I don't, I don't know, but you know, the majority of the people that came to, to school here, most of them are gone. You know, there's still mm -hmm. a few in the area. But as far as Boulder itself, I don't think there are very many in here. Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, but as far as uh, economic and, 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 and uh, better resources for the people who went through those programs, yeah, they, they all did well. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they all did well. You know, they, they got good jobs, you know, they were professionals, and, mm -hmm. and so it had a good uh, impact on the community. Okay. Even though that the Hispano community isn't uh, as active here in Boulder as, as, as in other places. Mm -hmm. How is Lafayette? Lafayette, there's a lot more rust than Lafayette. A lot more rust than Lafayette. You know, uh, they don't have any, it's kind of, nobody's doing anything. Everybody's just kind of, you know, there's no, there's no cause. You, know, you need a cause to get the people out of, out of the living rooms or watching television. Yeah. What about just like culturally? What do you see culturally in Lafayette or well, Louisville? Yeah, I, or? There, I, I think identity, okay? There's, there's, mm -hmm. there's identity, you know, so there's a lot, there's a lot more positive identity than what they used to be. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think we're we're a lot more more willing to share how proud of who we are than we used to be before. Mm -hmm. Now now we're a lot more proud of it. You know, like, you're so Chicano, and I'm proud of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and like I said, you know, we're we're here. You know, we've been here. We've been good, you know, good members of the community for for ages. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go away. And we're gonna we're gonna get smart. Okay, um, so tell me, who is a hero or heroine within the local Latino community that you, that you see doing things that are important in the community? Right now here, right here in Boulder? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of educators, you know, there's a friend of mine back home, uh, Richard Garcia, who does a lot of community work. Mm -hmm. Like I said, him and I grew up in actually the same little water. You know? So we go way back, mm -hmm. and he's been—he's been. I think he got a PhD, you know. So he's been uh, very active in the community, and you know, so him and his wife and, and his kids, and, and uh, you know, so then there's some some professors that, that, that did some good work up there. I don't know if uh, Mr. Martinez and, and uh, uh, Cuellar. I don't think Cuellar is here anymore. But um, they are just educators. The educators are the ones that are going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. They're the ones I think that are going to make have the biggest impact on our kids, okay? Mm -hmm. And once you educate the kids, then, you know, they, then they can mm -hmm. 
they can continue, they can carry the, the baton. Okay. Tell me what stands out in most ways that Latinos have contributed to the history of Boulder County. Well. And I'm talking Boulder County. I'm not talking just about the city well, of Boulder. You know, what, that, that student movement was really a big thing, okay? I mean, mm -hmm. it really, really, really is. I mean, a lot of people don't, don't see it that way, but we, we changed this little place for, for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, we were doing posadas here in this community, okay? I, I remember coming up here and uh, to see the look on some of these people's faces when, when they would open the door and see the, this group of people out there singing songs and, and in the dead of winter, it was it was a beautiful thing, okay. And so we brought that kind of that kind of color to, to, to the community, and and the, the 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 student movement itself had an impact, you know. I mean, uh, you know, so it, it it changed a lot of things, you know. That that movement had a, a changed a lot of people and a lot of things. A lot of people, you know, ended up I worked in IBM, and a lot of people doing getting good jobs, good houses, you know. So. It had an impact. That, the student movement had a big impact. Even though it was difficult, a lot of people don't see that it really had an impact. It really did. A lot of people got degrees and, and did well. Mm -hmm. and, so, their, and their kids are doing well. Mm -hmm. the, the nice thing about it is more, the majority of those people, their, their kids are all, it's like, it's understood they're all going to college. Versus before it was like, I got it, I'm going to work. But now it's like there's, there's a path towards college. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. Were you able to do teatro and that kind of work here in Boulder County, or did you go outside of the county to oh, do those? Everywhere. everywhere here in the county. Uh, uh, Saturday mornings, we'd go to the, uh, what's the name of that liquor store down there, uh, Liquor Mart? Yeah, we'd be doing our thing. Because, because well, they were boycotting, we were boycotting uh, wine. So yeah, we'd have yeah, the, the door there, and the people would get, you know, they were like, and we'd be doing our teatro, you know, so trying to teach people, tell them, hey, look. Don't buy this, don't buy that. And some people would, would ask, some people didn't want nothing to do with it. But we, yeah, so I mean, we're doing it there, the Safeway stores, I mean, all over. I mean, it, it, was, a, it was a weekly thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and we had a newspaper up there at the audio, and, and of course we were always covering those things, you know. But, oh yeah, the theater was everywhere. On campus, in the community, we took it out of, out of state, you know, uh, and like I said, it was a very powerful tool. It, 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 it brought down whatever whatever problems there were with, with people. They, they don't see. They would see us and they go, "Wow, oh, bunch of stupid!" Yeah. But when they when they would see the skits and, and laugh, and, and they would see the humanity in it, and, and that would just break barriers. And all of a sudden, they're they're listening and they're paying attention you know, and they're talking. About it. Mm -hmm. you know? And that was our goal. That was our goal. Just a second. Okay. Um, can we turn that off for just a sec? So, yeah, I know, I know I keep repeating myself, but we made a, a, an impact on this community. We, we, made it, you know, we made it a beautiful place. And, they, you know, they knew we were here, okay? They knew we were here. They knew that we were students. And, and, and we also did some nice things, like I said, about like Las Posadas and things like that. And not everybody was opposed to us. There were a lot of us that were, that were supportive. And they would say, okay, we're not going to buy that product, and we're not going to buy that product, and they were just really, really nice about it. And then you had your, you know, your other people that were just like, mm -hmm. Okay. Humanity, uh, unfortunately, we've got to have a little bit of everything. <laughs> okay, and now, can you tell me anything else that you've done in your life that you want, would like to have recorded, that you'd like to be able to share and tell your story about? Well, you know, like I, like I said, I, I do want to publish some of that music associated with, with the student movement, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, you know, just keep reminding our kids that uh, it's, it's a very doable thing. You know, we've done it. Look at this history. Check it out. And we did it, okay? And you can do it. And you can probably do a better job of it because you, now you have better tools. And you have us to draw from, you know, have our experience to draw from. So if you get left behind, it's probably because you didn't want to do anything about it. Because it can be done. She said, well, we did it. You can do it. Mm. We'll do it. Do it for your kids. If you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for your kids, your grandkids. Because guess what? Before you know it, 
They're going to be here. Mm. And guess what? They're going to need help. So. Are there any family stories about your growing up, like about your parents that you remember? Uh, about growing up, some funny things about growing up in San Luis Valley, some okay. serious things. Well, you know, uh, I'm a manito, okay? So my parents were manitos from, from Mexico, and, and my dad was just a, a lovable, very handy man, just a great guy. Okay. So, yeah, growing up in San Luis Valley, I mean, there was uh, a lot of challenges, you know, but. Uh, I think the majority of the population of there was less and we, we must have been 50, 51, 52 years. Yeah. So, so we had a, a, a community. We also had that to deal with uh, you know, some people who were coming from the No, it, it was a, a beautiful family. And, and, uh, the, the people down there were pretty supportive of each other. You know, there was, there was uh, a lot of communal things going on down there. For example, my dad would, my dad was, uh, he was handy with everything. He could build anything, he could fix anything. And so, you know, he would, you know, he would go help a neighbor, you know, put up whatever, and then the neighbor would help him do other stuff. They, they did a lot of this communal kind of things to, to help each other out. You know, I remember my dad would, uh, we'd, we'd drive up to a farm and he'd buy a sheet for like $8. Throw it in the trunk and go home and he'd string it up and, you know, and, and that was, I mean, that was food for the whole neighborhood. I mean, you know, he would, he would slaughter that, 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 that land, and, and the neighbor would just take a leg, or he'd take the blood, you know, I mean, so it, everybody would share, you know, so that, that was, a, that was beautiful, you know, that, that, that type of thing that was going on down there. Uh, you know, it, it kind of faded immensely, but I do remember a lot of that, you know. Now, one thing that my dad was, he was a pretty clever guy, you know. San Luis Valley, cold, 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 you know, and, uh, I remember days like that morning's 40 below zero. I mean, it was, it was, it would happen quite a bit. But anyway, so none of the cars would start. But what my dad would do is he'd get, he'd get a light, a, a, a light, and he'd put it under his oil pan of his car, and it would keep the oil warm all night. So in the morning, he would, his, his car was the only car in the neighborhood that would start. And so he'd get in his car, he, you know, he was one of the most wonderful, giving guys you ever want to meet, you know? Beautiful man. So he'd get in the car and go get everybody a boost. Get everybody a boost. And he'd come back and start defrosting the, the water pipes because the water had flowed in there. So a lot of stuff like that in the valley. But what I remember most of being when we were young, a lot of that communal thing. It was a beautiful thing to see, to see these guys. Because uh, they were, you know, they were, they were my, my dads and their friends and their compadres having, uh, helping each other, you know, helping each other, you know, my dad. Want to build and uh, get to the house and these friends come over and help him. And of course, he had me helping him too, you know, which I wasn't interested in any of this stuff. But he, 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 he tried to teach me. I was, I, was, uh, I was more interested in music. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about the music. Well, you know, the music, uh, interesting story, you know, it's kind of, I'm trouble in that little kid. But anyway, so I ended up being uh, uh, grounded. Couldn't go anywhere. And so there was a guitar there, and so my brother taught me a song. So I, I kind of, yeah. So and the guitar just made a lot of sense to me, you know. So so that that got, that changed my life actually. That, that, that changed my life. Like, all of a sudden, I, I had a different uh, social network, etc. Et but that's kind of how I got started with music, and I got into well, I was a teenage kid, and I had, I had a rock and roll band when I was you know, a teenager, and I knew my buddies, you know, I would play all over the place, you know, and uh, we'd make some pretty decent money, you know. Uh, I could compete with uh, some of the guys who were working part, full time all week, and I would just play on the weekends, you know, and, and, and make pretty close to what they were making, you know. So it, it was, it was, a, it was a pretty cool thing, and, and that's what, that's what kept me in high school. I, if I hadn't been for that, I would may, may want to drop out and go make money or something. But since I was making money, it kind of kept me in school. So, yeah, m music was uh, a big part of the house. I was happy. I was really happy. Uh, uh, my, my uncle was always told us my uncle was always a little kid, and I remember the scene was uh, like all the, the, the Mexican blues. <laughs> you know, those love songs. <laughs> and they would be singing those. Yeah, 
you know, expressing themselves. So that that's kind of how I got exposed to music. But, but you know, it's it's just one of those things that, 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 that I feel in love. And uh, I mean, I did a lot of work at CU. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, I played it there a few times. Uh, we have we have uh, we have our, our our get togethers up at, uh, on campus at, at the UMC, and, and, and uh, I sing, and, and other people do do other things, and we have dances there. You know. Yeah, we've had our, we had we even had our own dances up there at the UMC. You know, it's great. Okay. Did I get off track there? Thank you very much. No, I was actually going to ask you about UMC because Jose Franco told me that you guys had great dances up there. Oh, yeah. That you knew how to have a good time in between all the other things. We were we were studying, we were boycotting, we were dancing, mm -hmm. we were loving, we were fighting. <laughs> we were a beautiful community. Community art, you know. So yeah. no, it was it was awesome. We we, we, we did it all, and, and we made uh, we made an impact. And, and uh, anything I can do to to encourage these young people to do the same thing, do it. It's doable. It's very very doable. So I would let anybody. Tell On that note,